Oh yeah, how's it going? Um, I just finished a uh, probably about a 15 minute video on a two hour video I'd done before. Um, yeah, uh, called the truth versus the lies, uh, exposing uh, the lies told us as truth in regards to. Uh, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. Um, yeah, I think I basically touched on Christianity, maybe Judaism on that video. Um, bringing uh, uh, presenting more Biglino the Italian translator with the Masoretic text uh, and Irving Finkel and his um, uh, Noah's Ark adventure you know, put a project together from the uh, uh, translating the uh, ancient Babylonian cuneiform text uh, step by step um, a guide by a certain a Sumerian god to a boat builder <laughs> and he made this he completed this uh, arc yeah this coracle and it was round but I forgot something really important um, uh, an idea that came up from researching you know looking at those different videos and doing my own personal research and stuff like that the, uh, an idea dawned on me um, prior to that right uh, so I made some notes here and I gotta you know, emphasize that it's I'm looking at it as a what if right um, it's only an assumption at present in this moment in time okay I've still yet to prove Moro Bigley you know isn't talking through a hole in his bottom or Irving Finkel also isn't talking through a hole in his butt. Um, yeah, because you, you need to do that, right? You need to, if, you, if you're making a claim, you need to establish the facts, provide the evidence, prove, or you let the evidence prove itself, but you got to prove that you know, these guys are telling the truth, they're not talking a whole lot of rubbish, you know? Okay, so in these notes I put, uh, again, a what if, it, it's only an assumption, it, present in this moment in time this very moment in time okay if Moro Biglio the Italian translator of the ancient Masoretic text commissioned by the Vatican who published many of his books prior right um, when he translated those ancient Masoretic texts he revealed that underneath hidden underneath in that in those languages be it the Hebrew, the Greek the Latin yeah I think he was basically stressing the Hebrew that um, there was another story a more ancient story hidden beneath that you know like yeah, and, and on a different layer right underneath the common uh, stories we've been told at church told sold you know that is the gospel truth in church or at Sunday school if you have been to any of those okay um yeah well basically what Zachariah Sitchin was saying you know and many others that followed that um some gods or aliens came from out of space and you know uh, or and found that there was a pre-Adamic man or a Neanderthal or a Homo erectus or a Homo whatever the other name is um, active on the planet right on this lush green planet and all that sort of stuff so the uh, alien confederation or whatever came in the convoys and you know because their planet was dying and all that sort of stuff as mentioned in that video um, you know they need gold but they're chickens that didn't like going down in the dark so they could they, they um, use this 
go to ex existing Homo erectus or Neanderthal man or you know um, by experimenting on them giving them their DNA do genetic splicing and all that sort of stuff yeah yeah um, so if that's if what he's found is fact and again he's not talking through a hole in his bottom right um, wouldn't it therefore make the Bible or the biblical account both the Old and the New Testament fraudulent you know um, and as Luther Martin Luther the reformist stated in his book the Jews are liars and the protocols of the elders of Zion are correct and where it states that the Jews have created a false religion contained within a Bible or Biblio Greek right, collection of books 66 books or someone else did you know so someone or some group or, or some individual or whatever has lied to us you know told us sold us these stories through churches through Sunday school for years and years you know you know knowing that it's a complete hokum right because Morio Biglio states on that interview that through the translator that yeah some people hassled him you know, maybe attacked him um, trying to suppress it because they didn't want the truth out there but he states um, these top Jewish rabbis and you know, people up there right that know that what he found is true it's the truth that and that sooner or later that truth is going to come out it's going to be revealed you know so yeah they yeah they they say he's right you know um, yeah so that would make it fraudulent I'm sure of it yeah um, the Sumerian Akkadian Babylonian texts are myths myths M-Y-T-H-S that's exactly what they are but Gilgamesh was a king a real king that actually lived you know it's like with legends like Bruce Lee you know kills 10 men with one blow one we are whatever you need yeah whatever he does you know all well, that sort of crap um yeah 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 he dodges bullets you know like FBI test and all that he ran down the hall and he dodges all these bullets whatever kicked the door and knocked out the FBI guy behind the door that sort of crap um yeah that's what happens with legends you know the stories get exaggerated um, yeah, apparently he's a great king, loved king, and you know, by the people, and I guess they exaggerated a bit like that Conan story, you know. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Conan story, Conan the Barbarian. Okay, another guy did the same or similar translation of the Masoretic text as uh, Moro Baglino did, and he also came to the same conclusion. But he had no idea that Moro Baglino was actually doing that, right? Um, there's a video of it on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, so that would mean that Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are a method of mind control that keeps people dumbed down, submissive, under the control, under the boot here, right? Because if you look at the real definition of religion, it's been hidden from the, uh, left out of the. Uh, uh, well, dictionaries it's like being you're bound you're bound to something you're bound by something you're chained to it you know be it a book a, whole, a holy book a holy books or a organized religion um, well I can see with that video of that Egyptian guy helped me get out of Egypt that he's like trapped there he can't get up you know um, one minute he's got a criminal record, then it's clean, and he's got a, you know, another one, and he's, he's been accused of blasphemy and all this sort of stuff because he spoke up and out about the LGBT uh, people's rights, you know, human rights and all that sort of stuff. Their, their rights as people, right? As human beings. So he gets called a blasphemer and probably got death threats and all that sort of stuff. Well, if that guy also is not, if that guy's not talking through a hole in his bottom, then, um, yeah then 
what does that tell you about that particular religion? You know, making out that it's a religion of peace, when behind the scenes it's a religion of threats. You know, um, control, manipulation, um, force, yeah, and repercussion. <laughs> if that's the kind of thing religion is, or stuff that you know, um, yeah, don't want any part in that. Uh, so yeah, that's basically um, my notes. Um, how can I prove this, verify this is true to all, or do, do I even have to bother? Because through these videos of that, I've actually, it's actually proven. Uh, yeah, let's say I've proven it, right, that it's all fraudulent. Um, yeah, well, I basically you know, been through experiences with Christians and you know, religiosos who come at me with all this all these claims that this is what the scriptures say and all that sort of stuff but they don't speak Hebrew, they don't speak Greek, they can't read it, write it, you know, they've never read the Torah all those sort of things um, and then they say oh your biblical prophecy here matches and the New Testament matches the, the biblical uh, prophecy in the Old Testament then you get a Jew rabbi like uh, uh, what's his name rabbi Tobia Singer uh, yeah I think his name you know he says you're trying to match uh, a New Testament prophecy with a Old Testament um, writings right claim that as uh, a match when it's not you know you don't even know the Hebrew you, you don't write it you don't speak it you never read the Torah or the Talmud or the Mishnah or whatever he goes on about you know, he actually debates with Christians that make these claims. But he, he went up to one uh, somewhere in America and he had a big sign up. Um, Isaiah 53 cover up and he sees, oh, have you read 52, 51 or something like that? Even 54 or something? And the guy says, oh, F off, you know, I don't need to talk to you. F off and all this sort of stuff. What kind of attitude is that as a Christian, you know? So, yeah, basically I'm out here. I'm just totally sick of it. Like that guy said on that, uh, I think it was broadcast or something some movie he says I'm sick of it I can't take it anymore I'm, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore you know that sort of thing um, yeah yeah I just basically got to that stage where there's so much bull crap out there that you know I, I just want to wake people up make them realise you know through these videos they're being duped you know because for, for years I, I couldn't figure out why when I just talk to people, we have a good conversation, you know, like compare you know, knowledge of scriptures or whatever, and then I present them with um, the supposed original um, manuscripts from the original language, from the original church, from the original apostle, um, you know, and they say, oh, oh, throw that in the rubbish, it's all, you know, it's satanic, and you're Satan, you're the devil, all that sort of crap. It's like, Whoa, what changed, you know? I understand, like I understand through a uh, person that's going for a PhD, master's degree, whatever, uh, in um, cognitive therapy or something like that. She explained that, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's human nature to to go like that because you expose them, you know. What they hold and cherish is true. You've, um, yeah, told them it's wrong. <laughs> so they're retaliating, they're retorting, you know. And, um, yeah, because they're defenders of the faith, they're, they're going to say you're Satan, you're the devil, all this sort of thing. Whatever. Um, and start making assumptions, telling lies about you, you know, and, you know, watch their tone of voice, but they'll be like soft spoken, then they'll be practically yelling down your throat, sort of thing. But, yeah, yeah, that's basically what I did. By mistake, I, um, if that portion out and I thought oh damn it's, it's pretty important you know, because this is how I think this is how I feel this is what I realized yeah um, well it needs to be exposed so if someone doesn't like it well tough cookies you know it's like the people have got the the nuts to come to me and say blah 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 you know Jesus said this Jesus said that when he didn't, you know, and they're saying, "Oh, if you don't, if you don't conform, if you don't, la la la, la you're going to go to hell and burn." 
doesn't even say that in the original scriptures it says you go to oblivion you know I can understand that because uh, okay say you have God like, let's say you have the positive right okay uh, for your uh, devotion your worship your following you know your, your belief in this God you get a reward right everyone's after that reward what's that eternal life a place in the kingdom of heaven live forever you know maybe some uh, grapes you know 72 virgins all that sort of stuff you know and you have the opposite you have the the counterfeit to god the, the negative right okay like you have good and evil you have light and dark you have up and down you know, yin yang all that sort of stuff right um you can't have the positive without that negative right you can't have the good without that evil okay so you're going to have this opposite okay you know if you get a reward of eternal life living in heaven forever with god then you're going to get the opposite if you're not a believer right you know um and off you know off you go to uh, according to this john 3 16 uh, god so loved the world they sent his only son his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish right which means go to oblivion you know because if God like okay that's what I like about his name unless they say Allah is merciful God of mercy and all that sort of stuff right well yeah sure if he's a God of love and he's a God of mercy right he should be full of love and mercy right to the very end like who who put themselves in that situation to go to oblivion yourself you know you chose you know oh you know, I don't want to know that crap I'd rather do what I want to do you know all that sort of stuff drink smoke have a little bit of substance whatever yeah stuff with that you know bible crap church crap and then you stand before God and it's like uh oh I made a mistake he says well yep there's a uh, reward and then there's a punishment you know off to oblivion you go and you might go get chucked out into out of darkness all that sort of stuff yeah, but I don't think he's a god of like forever torment. You know, sending you need to a place of burning and that sort of stuff. According to this, if it's the original scriptures, right? If it's the, uh, in the original language, the original manuscripts, la la la, all that sort of stuff, right? And it says that you know you go to oblivion. What's oblivion? Maybe you get burnt up. You know, uh, like they say in, in, in this as well. You go to the lake of fire, whatever. You know, maybe you burn up. Phew, and that's it you, you no longer exist that's what oblivion is yeah you know or you could be like cast out into cast out into out of darkness right you know and maybe you can see what's going on in heaven and all that sort of stuff and people are living it up you know eternal life whatever and you're like gnashing the teeth and you're like oh i screwed up i screwed up what did i what the hell you know? what was i thinking you know, like it's like that rich man, poor man um, parable, where the uh, rich man had it all and the poor man had nothing. He was um, waiting to get the crumbs under his table and the dogs are licking the sores, all that sort of stuff. You know, like he gets, uh, he suffered and all that sort of crap, and he ends up getting taken up into uh, paradise and is comforted by the angels and all that sort of stuff. Or well, this poor, poor rich fella, or well, this rich fella, he had it all. He's like in. Um, she old or Hades in the grave, you know, being tormented, you know, he's in pain, you know, because the, his hell is his torment is or his hell is he can see what he could have had, you know, but he screwed up, right? But if you do research on that parable, it's actually uh, supposedly a Talmudic insert. Yeah, you got to research and study. To, to figure that one out um yeah because that's what the bible is it's a mixture of like pagan uh talmudic uh, egyptian psalms 104 is an ode to uh atom yeah yeah <laughs> it's uh i think it's from the book of the dead or something like that yeah it's, it's very similar like i was sitting in church one day and they were singing this particular psalm in the, in the, in the hymn book right and then i found out through study or whatever because it sounded like oh well actually it said oh 
sun s-u-n instead of s-o-n right so i thought well that's a bit funny so i think i went online and researched it and it was actually um some guy had included it in the hymnals way back um and it was said that it was a uh, ode to the dead uh, in the book of the dead or something like that i can't remember what it was years ago it was something like that i was like what the hell and then this guy was saying well you're singing that ode to uh, Aton or the, or the dead or whatever in your um, hymnals at your church that's yeah, so what's going on there yeah so I'm out there as I said just trying to wake people up you know because yeah they don't know what they like they say they've read the bible five or ten times or whatever and they don't even know what's written in the beginning of their book and the foreword yeah um that some committee were gathered and they were sat down and revised a new English edition. You know? Yeah, so yeah, um yeah that's basically it what I left out. I thought that would be important. So if you like this then um subscribe to my channel and give me some likes, leave me some comments, tell me how you liked it. And that inspires me to um, do more videos exposing uh, the truth versus the lies, um, the truth versus the BS, you know. Um, yeah, I, I'm just basically sick of the crap. You know, it's been pushed on me as um, the truth, the real truth. And then being forced through uh, deception, deceit, trickery, subtle threats you know and stuff like that if you don't conform you're off to hell and all that stuff you know when it's not even written in the original um, manuscripts it's speaking of oblivion or in the modern versions Sheol or Hades Sheol which is what the Hebrew for the grave and Hades uh, was a mythical abode of the dead you know and, and all those Greek mythical stories where somebody uh, was banished to Hades and all this sort of stuff and some hero went down there and yeah, saw her or something like that yeah, maybe cut off Medusa's head or something and all this sort of stuff yeah it's all mythical yeah so yeah yeah okay so as I said if you like this video uh, leave me a comment subscribe cool and um I'll make some more like this yeah because it's about time all this got exposed see like I have problems with this one right because it's supposed to be Adam and Eve were um, created first right and there's nobody else there's only Cain and Abel the children Cain kills Abel right no one else is born to Adam and Eve okay Cain gets banished out of the presence of God he gets shifted off into the land of Nod right right he says well there's other people there if they find me they might kill me what Christians told me Adam and Eve that's it you know um yeah so where did he get his sister from uh where did he get his wife from oh it's just the incest no 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 well if you look at it properly the, the text that says that after Cain went into that land and he found himself a wife it's like well hang on if he had a wife in that land or he was saying to God well it's bad enough that I'm banished from you your presence I've got to go into that land and whoever finds me will kill me it's like well how the hell can there be somebody else there if Christians telling me there's only Adam and Eve and Cain right yeah and someone else says oh you know he uh, he uh, married his sister no 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 it doesn't tell you that because it says after Cain went into the land of Nod then Adam and Eve had sons and daughters but first they had Seth right who became the heir of the Adamic line I'm pretty sure it was Seth right and then you got like um, Christians telling me oh yeah you know, the Bible says the Bible says Adam lived to be 900 years old then he died bull crap hokey pokey rubbish if you go and look at the original manuscripts uh, in, in English right the Genesis translated by Alex, uh, Victor Alex in Alexander right when he translated Genesis or Bereshit right it actually says in there uh, his lineage 
Adam's lineage uh, lived on for 900 years. Okay, he might have died around uh, 200 or something like that, or maybe a bit more, maybe 800 years or something like that. But yeah, his lineage, well, I don't think he even lived that long, 800 years, because it's saying his lineage lasted 900 years, right? So, uh, you, you got Seth, his son, who became the heir, right? He was the leader of everybody else, you know, that lineage, right? And then he dies, and then his first son becomes the leader of that lineage. It goes on and on like that. See? So, and also there's the um, claim by Christians that it was all made in six days. You've got the Aramaic word in that translation Genesis of Genesis of Bereshit, but in fact in Alexandria it says the word Yuma, Y U M A in the Aramaic, which means a miser immeasurable period, uh, age, era, eon, day with capital D. See, what I found was that okay from another site, world's last chance, right? In there. Saturday is not the Sabbath um, rents, right? That um, they're saying the Hebrew day is not as we know a day. It's kind of a weird day. And you go look at their charts and stuff like that, and you see that the Hebrew day is actually yeah, it's really weird. It's like they're um, uh, I sort of split up like you know, like a clock sort of thing, but it's like um. 12 o'clock in the morning is early evening <laughs> or something like that you know and it goes around three o'clock that's like mid evening or something and and then you got like three to nine that's evening yeah, it's all weird yeah, it's really weird go have to go look at that site and look at the, the charts and see what i mean um haven't been there for a while yeah they kind of i was talking to victor alexander about it and he's like uh, yeah, he had a look at that site and he says, oh, they're kind of commercial, kind of poppy, you know. Um, yeah, but he just said not hadn't got to that stage where he was translating to prove that those lunar solar Sabbaths, as they claim, was actually fact. Yeah, so, um, as I said, for this drags on for another two hours. Um, if you like this video, then leave me some comments, subscribe, give me some thumbs up, and um, I'll make some more for you.